So here's an example of how we use mixture density network in our research. And this was actually a work done by my PhD student, uh, Li Chen, and uh, which was published in CVPR 2019. The objective of this work is to use uh, the mixture density network for generating multiple hypotheses of 3D human pose estimation from 2D images. We'll see that uh, 3D human pose estimation is actually an inverse problem that requires multiple solutions. Here's uh, the problem setting in 3D human pose estimation. The problem is that given a 2D image of a person uh, that might look something like this, here's several examples of the image which contains uh, multiple which contains uh, multiple examples of the different people in these uh, images. We want to find from these 2D uh, images, we want to find the 3D human pose that corresponds directly to these uh, humans in the image. And this is a very difficult problem. So uh, it's uh, not just an inverse problem, but it's also a U pose problem where the depth is actually missing. So we do, given this uh, image, we only know this particular location on the image, the XY pixel location on this image we would not know where the 3D location of this corresponding point lies in. And uh, the reason why I say this is a U pose problem is because given this particular light ray, then, and we know light rays always uh, move in straight line, it's always traveling in straight line. So this means that the 3D location of this particular pixel, and this is our camera center, it can lie anywhere in front of the camera, so anywhere in front of this camera. And we have completely no idea on where is it going to be. So there's a one parameter family of uh, possible solution for just this pixel alone, give parameterized by this expression over here. So uh, if you're interested to find out more about this parameterization, I encourage every one of you to take uh, my class on 3D computer vision in the next semester. It's also a level 5000 module. And here's the exi some existing works that is applied on this uh, the 3D human pose estimation from 2D images. So the first work is uh, the first class of categories of work is the two stage approach where we first detect the 2D pose. This means that given the image, we first uh, detect the on the pixel space the pose of the human on this particular image and then we design another network over here this is also a deep network from the image from the image directly to estimate the 2d pose over here this is also using a deep network so dnns are used here to estimate this and then uh, once we are done with this this is the first stage we will input this into another network to uh, give us the 3d pose over here. So this uh, the advantage over here is that uh, because the lifting from 2D pose to 3D pose is actually the more difficult problem because it's U pose as we have uh, seen earlier and if we directly use the image and try to lift it to the 3D pose the image might contain a lot of background distracting backgrounds and this makes the whole process much more difficult. So the advantage of doing this uh, to estimate the 2D pose here we are, we are actually alleviating the background corruption or the noisy background problem from the more difficult problem of lifting 2D to 3D. And of course, there's also one stage uh, approach where given the 2D image will directly estimate the 3D human pose. And there's a, uh, in CVPR 2017, there's this work that actually uh, first to propose this and using a cost to find scheme to estimate this particular 3D human pose. And uh, the advantage is that it makes use of the, the 2D pose data sets directly. That means that it's directly, uh, there's no two stage approaches here. There's no two networks over here. It's just one single coherent end-to-end -end networks that uh, directly lift the 2D to 3D. But of course, the this particular uh, way of doing it, it's uh, going to be much more challenging and the results is usually less comparable to the two-stage approach. So there's a common thing amongst the one-stage and the two-stage approaches is that they are trying to achieve the same thing given a set of training data where you have an input and you have a set of output as a ground truth, output 3D pose, input 2D image, output 3D pose, or it could be an input 2D pose and an output 3D pose, depending on one stage or two stage approaches. But it's always a one-to-one -one correspondence.
between the input and output space. And uh, what we are doing here in the existing approaches is that we are always training a deep network uh, using the L2 loss where we simply minimize the difference between the estimated and the ground truth in the output space in the of the 3D post here. But two reasons why this uh, is not adequate or this is insufficient to learn the 3D human post from 2D images. As we have seen that this is a U post problem because given one pixel on the image, this could correspond to the whole light ray anywhere in this, uh, the 3D post can be anywhere along this particular light ray. What this means is that there's a depth ambiguity, hence there could be multiple solution that is feasible. And uh, of course, on the 2D image, the joints could be occluded. Uh, it could be a self-occlusion, like uh, for example, the joints of the hand might be occluded behind the body, for example. So we can see that here is a, uh, an example where we generate five hypotheses from the mixture density network of the 3D human pose. And when they are reprojected back onto the 2D uh, image, we can see that they all roughly correspond to the same 2D uh, reprojection within a certain error bound over here. So this shows that this particular problem is actually an inverse problem because of the depth ambiguity as well as the joint occlusion. What this means is that the paradigm of one image one 2D image input to one 3D post output means that the whole community of uh, deep learning is actually overfitting to the benchmark data sets. And uh, hence, we propose the mixture density network to alleviate this particular problem. Uh, so our mixture density network, as I've mentioned in the uh, previous slides, that it actually estimates multiple solution to better model the u post problem. And the multiple solution, as mentioned earlier, is represented by the mixture, the Gaussian mixture kernel uh, distribution, and where each kernel, each Gaussian kernel is equivalent to a feasible solution. And here we adopt the two-stage approach where stage one is simply the 2D post estimator. So input is a image of a person, and the output is the 2D post. And then our contribution is this stage two over here where we simply take in 2D poses and output multiple solutions using the mixture density network. And here's how we do it. So uh, we let us represent W as the learnable weights of the deep network of F, uh, which is uh, the our mixture density network over here. So F over here would uh, be what I have mentioned earlier on. It can be split into three parts. The means which is represented by mu, sigma, the standard deviation, as well as the mixing coefficient, which we represent as alpha over here. And all of them takes in the input 2D poses. So x here is our 2D pose input as the input to the deep network. And as well as there is a set of uh, learnable parameters of w that is common among all these uh, outputs over here. We we'll represent the probability density of uh, the 3D pose as Y over here is a three dimensional where we have N number of joints. So usually this N over here in our parameterization is 17 joints where on the human body and the 2D uh, joints as uh, X, which is two uh, X, Y location on the pixel space. And N over here would also be 17 joints, corresponding joints. So now we'll simply model the posterior distribution of this guy over here, the output space of Y conditioned upon X, our input, uh, uh, and W here is all our learnable parameter using the Gaussian mixture model, as I have mentioned in the previous slide, where alpha here is simply the mixing coefficient. Uh, phi over here is our uh, uh, each individual component of the uh, Gaussian distribution. Now, these two conditions here would be the conditions for our uh, mixing coefficient that it must sum to 1 as well as it must lie between 0 and 1. So here is a, a Gaussian mixture model that I have mentioned uh, earlier. A 1D illustration would be that uh, the solutions that corresponds to this uh, output of this uh, deep network of the mixing coefficient would be that we will simply take the three mu, mu1, mu2, mu3 here as the solution of uh, so mu1 would correspond to y1, mu2 corresponds to y2 and y3 over here. Three possible 3D poses in this 1D illustrations over here. Now the loss function would be uh, similar to what we have uh, 
look at uh, just now. But in this case here, we will simply maximize a posterior uh, distribution over the learnable weights instead of the maximal likelihood that we have seen in the previous formulation. So uh, because we want to add in a conjugate prior to help us to determine the distribution to constrain the distribution uh, better so in this case here we will do max over w which is our learnable weight parameters given this training data sets over here where we have the 2d uh, post and the corresponding uh, 3d post as our training data sets so here this w will be conditioned upon our inputs as well as all the hyperparameters that we will see that we use this to define the conjugate priors so assuming that each training data set is uh, IID, we can simply rewrite this into uh, this formulation using the base rule. And then assuming IID, we can split this into a product of K times over here, over all our uh, different uh, samples. And now, uh, we, since we have M number of components in our Gaussian mixture model, we'll simply write this in terms of the sum of the uh, each Gaussian components, weighted sum of each Gaussian components by the mixing coefficient. And then uh, putting this maximal A posterior into a minimal negative uh, log posterior, we'll get this uh, expression over here, which we can use as our loss function to the deep network. And we can see that this consists of two terms over here. The first term here is the likelihood term. The second term here is our uh, posterior or our prior terms over the learnable weights. We can see that uh, this uh, will be our 3D likelihood term, so which is that directly corresponds to the Gaussian mixture model which we have defined earlier. And this guy over here is our prior. And the last term can be further evaluated into these two components over here, where the first term over here would be the term that parameterize our uh, conjugate prior over our mixing coefficient and the uh, last term over here would be the conjugate prior over mu and sigma so we uh, assume we will not put any constraint on mu and sigma because this is our directly our output space and but we will put a, a conjugate prior on alpha here which is uh, making use of the Dirichlet uh, distribution on the categorical distribution of alpha over here. And here's the exact form of the Dirichlet uh, distribution where uh, since this guy over here is independent of alpha, we can simply uh, remove it in the log distribution and treat it as a constant. It, anyways, it won't affect the, the loss function as we are optimizing over uh, W over here. Now, the a uh, general remark of this is that uh, we will generally set lambda 1 equals to uh, lambda uh, 2 all the way to lambda m uh, to a c constant over here, uh, which is more than 1 to prevent overfitting of the Gaussian kernel, or rather to prevent all these Gaussian kernels in the mixture model to collapse into one single Gaussian distribution. Here are some experimental results on the uh, uh, open source data set, which is the MP2 uh, test set. We can see that by getting the best hypothesis, this is uh, the, all the 3D human post estimation that we have, uh, uh, that is output from our network uh, from the 2D input post. So in summary, we have explained the difference between the discriminative and generative model. And we have also looked at the concept behind variational autoencoder and how it can be used to generate new images. Finally, we look at the mixture density network to solve inverse problem where multiple feasible solutions can exist. And I have gone through an example on how we can make use of this mixture density network in our research to estimate 3D human pose estimation from 2D human pose input.